It's time to start building up the Batman Rogues Gallery. And we start with Mr. Freeze. This is the first model I completely printed in resin since the base simply had too much intricate detail to be printed with FDM. And I decided to print all of the Batman villains in 6 scale since I'm already running out of space. This model was sculpted by the amazing people over at Berserk. A link to their Patreon page is in the description. They make two awesome DC related statues and busts every month. So I have a lot of catch up to do with their models. Since this model was already released one year ago, I have seen a few finished paint jobs. So I wanted to do a color palette that I haven't seen yet, which was quite tricky. I came up with four different sketches. Which one would you have chosen? I went for the one on the very left. I started the post-processing with a toothpick and Tamiya putty to fill all the small resin drain holes. I always put a bunch of holes in my models to make sure the inside can also be cleaned perfectly. But that brings the issue on the other hand that I have to fix a lot of holes later. For the holes that are too large to be filled with only putty I use aluminum foil so that the putty has something to sit on. After the first cleanup I rattle canned all of the parts with primer. Then I glued together the parts with a 5 minutes to component epoxy. For the large gaps I took Ace epoxy sculpt and clay sculpting tools to fix them. Then I started the paint shop by priming the base with a rattle can black and then used chainmail silver over that. To separate the lower part of the base with the rest I painted the columns with regular silver. Then I took dark flash tone as a base color for the manhole sign in the middle. Afterwards I mixed black with a bit of earth and water for weathering. I painted the whole base with it and then removed the excess with a paper towel. When that was dry I used black mixed with light gray to paint these cylinder dome eyes generator condensator thingies. And when that was dry I used a black wash to weather all the silver parts further. To dab away the excess I here used a magic eraser sponge. And I used the same wash to further wash or weather the manhole. Afterwards it was time to start painting the icicles. I used ghost grey as a base coat here. Then I used stormy blue mixed with scurvy green to paint the icicles at the bottom where the ice is thicker and highlighted the peaks with ghost grey. Because I initially was too lazy to mask off all the icicles of the base, I tried to hand paint them with a paintbrush, but you can see that the result was pretty uneven compared to the large ice block I airbrushed. So I had no other choice but to mask everything and use the airbrush for all the other icicles as well. And same technique here, hitting the icicles with a deep blue first and then highlighting them from the top where the eyes would be thinner. The final color for the base was Tinny Tin with which I dry brushed the manhole. Then I glued the base parts together with 5 minute epoxy and used a satin varnish for the manhole and the ice generator thingies and a gloss varnish for the icicles. Afterwards I used Green Stuff World Snow Powder to make the base a bit snowy. You just mix the powder with water and some PVA glue and depending on the ratio you get a thick or smooth paste. The snow also comes in handy because it hides all the remaining gaps and also some paint imperfections. And that was it for the base and we can jump over to the head. Which probably was the easiest thing for this project. As a base coat I used electric blue mixed with a bit of dead white. For the next layer I mixed in more white and airbrushed it down from the top for the highlights. Then I used ultramarine blue as a wash. Afterwards I wrapped the head in magic dough and painted the goggles red. Next I used model air blue to paint the lips, followed by black for the goggles, frame and the head strap. I then used a bit of white mixed into the red to paint light reflections into the goggles glasses. Then I hit the glasses with gloss varnish and the rest of the head with a matte varnish. 
And that was it for the hat. Now let's take care of the suit. Since I decided to go for a black metal looking armor, I rattle canned the whole body with a matte black rattle can. Then I took gun metal and slightly misted the black armor parts to give it that black metal look. Afterwards I dry brushed along the edges of the armor and painted some scratches. I also painted parts of his suit like the boots or the pipes with gun metal. When that was dry I used night blue to paint his undersuit. Then I already started detailing again with gunmetal for all the metal parts and accents. The tubing is the same color that I used for the head which was electric blue. I used polished gold to accent the middle panel thing. Then I took model air red because I wanted to imitate a red glowing light in the middle of that thing that I have no idea what it is supposed to do. I then painted a little light grey dot in the middle and used a dry brush paint with red again. With a mix of black and light grey I painted all the leather parts. And what I apparently forgot to film was that I painted all of the tubing with that white. And those tubes also got a wash of black. I painted the logos with red, did some detailing with black and then painted the glass in the tank at least that's what I'm trying to make out of it, with electric blue. I initially wanted to only paint it with a brush and create an effect as if the substance in the tank would glow, but that didn't really work with the brush, so I took the airbrush instead, after I removed the bad looking part with an in alcohol soaked q-tip. Then I used a gloss varnish to imitate the glass in front of the IC liquid. For his cold gun I also used gun metal and then base coated the little cylinders with the freeze liquid with white. Then I used polished gold to paint some accents and then used electric blue for the freezer fluid. And that was basically it for the gun. Then I also used the electric blue again to paint a few more details on the body and then glued together the remaining parts with super glue. While you watch me glue the parts together, please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell icon. Then I used Green Stuff World's Liquid Frost for the first time, which is a milky fluid that will create crystals when it dries and imitates frost. The clear resin comes out as really foggy once it's cleaned and cured, so I used a bunch of different sanding papers, starting with 800, going all the way to 5000 and then hit it with a gloss varnish. With Mr. Freeze's Frozen Wife I'm going into the realms of Minnie's painting, I guess since she's only 3 cm tall. I firstly painted her skin parts with pale flesh and then with red for her dress. The inner circle of the base was painted with white as a base paint for snow and then I used black for the other ring as a base for gunmetal. A little black for the shoes and a few highlights on the dress with a mix of red and white and then she was done. Now when Mr. Freeze's wife was done I had the problem that the dome was too small to properly sand it inside and also clear coating it with a gloss clear coat was not really possible for me. So I thought why not try to create a mold of it and then cast it with a hopefully more transparent resin. So I started to build a box with a bit of spare plastic from a toy box in which I could pour the silicone. One side for the outside of the dome and one side for the inside of the dome. And it wasn't the best idea to take a scalpel for that. I glued the dome to the plastic with super glue and then cut out a hole to be able to pour silicone into the inside of the dome. I used crepe tape trying to seal the box so no silicone comes out, but that didn't work. Use hot glue instead to seal all the edges. Anyways, I then poured a two component silicone into the mold after a good steer of two or three minutes. And then the silicone ran out, but the dome was not covered, so I had to mix another batch. And then I learned that crepe tape is not the best material trying to seal the edges because when it was dry the dome top was again not completely covered because I had a leak somewhere so another round of silicone was needed. 
When this side was finally cured after a day I started to work on the inside of the dome. I glued two small wood pieces to the corner of the bottom of the dome. That's where the resin will later flow into the dome. Then I built another box and sealed it with hot glue this time and poured in the silicone. And after demolding everything I saw that the top of the dome was not covered enough in silicone so I had a hole there. Great. But anyways I mixed a bit of clear resin, filled it into the mold with a little pipette and waited 3 days for demolding. And then came the disenchantment. The casted ultra clear resin dome was just as foggy as the printed one. And the top was not looking great because of the hole in the mold and the bottom also had a flaw. But yeah, you'll learn from experience, right? Since the casted resin also needs to be sanded and polished, I learned that I didn't gain anything here, so my solution was, if there is no inside that needs to be sanded, I only need to sand the outside, which is much easier. So the plan then was to submerge Mr. Freeze's wife directly into the resin, which later is supposed to be an ice block where she is frozen into. So I built another box, sealed this one with hot glue right from the beginning and after demolding I had a nice and simple one part mold. Luckily I printed out the tiny woman a couple of times so I used a spare one to try out if the color that I painted it with withholds the resin casting. I tinted the resin with a drop of blue alcohol ink simply because I thought it might look cool as an ice block but the color also helps to see that you mixed it properly. Then I submerged the figure and waited another 3 days after I demolded it. And the result was not too bad, a little bit too blue and a little bit of the figure's color came off, but with a proper varnish coat it should stay on for the next one. Then I repeated the same process with the actual figure after I sealed it with varnish. Glued a toothpick to the bottom to have something to hold her and used a little less of alcohol ink this time. Then I submerged the figure, waited for another 3 days to demold it and voila, we can work with that. I ended up using 4 different sandpapers, I started with 400 and went through 800, 1000 and 5000. However, the sanded resin only looks crystal clear when it's wet, as soon as it dries it's foggy again. So I also used my rotary tool with a polish attachment and tried to polish it. And a few spots were becoming crystal clear with that, however I thought let's try a coat of gloss clear coat. And that worked out pretty good as well, faster and less messy than polishing. You can literally watch it becoming clear. And then I tried something in addition because I had a spare wife printed with clear resin. I used some blue alcohol ink to tint the clear resin repeated all the steps I showed you before and then this was the end result. Let me know in the comments below which version you would have picked. And with that I called it good.